Good morning. It's Paul Gradenwitz's response to me on June 2nd, 2018. And I am Jonathan Doolin, and this is June 3rd, 2018. Paul is here talking about the Lambda CDM model. And, and I'd like to look and see um, a couple of, see if I can determine something about the Lambda CDM model. Um, I don't know whether Paul is arguing here for the Lambda CDM model or against it, so uh, all I can really do is try to give uh, my understanding of the Lambda CDM model. One thing to look at is Davis and Lineweaver's Expanding Confusion. Um, I don't know if this is a good source. Oh, actually, yes, it should be. Um, because in figure one, we demonstrate these features for the observationally favored lambda CDM concordance model. Omega m equals 0.3, omega alpha, omega lambda equals 0.7. So this is space-time diagrams, plural. Now here's the caption for their diagram. It's pretty long, and here's the diagram itself. Um, I'm going to try to run through some of this and uh, see if I can... Uh, Read the, read the caption while pointing at the diagram, see if we can try to understand it as well as the uh, diagram, as well as the caption presents it at least. So we have a figure 1a, 1b, and 1c. And it says uh, figure 1, space-time diagram showing the main features of the general relativistic description of the expansion of the universe for the omega m equals 0 0.3 and omega lambda equals 0 0.7 model with Hubble's constant being 70 kilometers per second per megaparsecs. All right, the dotted lines show the world lines of co-moving objects. Okay, I'm seeing dotted lines right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Co-moving in uh, the definition, as I understand it, uh, represent, well, co-moving just means, well, it's, it's circular. Um, the, uh, they say co-moving distance down here. They define the co-moving distance down here to be, I guess, I think that represents the actual movement of objects in the Hubble flow. Yeah, okay, so co-moving distance, their definition of co-moving, their definition of co-moving means following the Hubble flow, uh, which m most galaxies uh, in the universe would be following this Hubble flow approximately. Um, so, so in this diagram, you have the the Hubble flow moving outward, and in this diagram you have the Hubble flow straight lines, vertical lines, which means they're stationary according to the co-moving distances. And here we have the proper distance. Well, let's keep reading to find out what they, how they define the proper distance, because this is definitely not observed. I don't think this is observed distance. It's not Euclidean distance. It's something, some other concept that I don't know for sure. Okay, so dotted lines show the world lines co-moving objects. We are the central vertical world line. So this line represents us. And our world line is vertical in all three diagrams. The next thing it says is that the current redshifts of the co-moving galaxies appear labeled on each co-moving world line. So I'm thinking this is 0, 1, 3, 10, 0, 1, 3, 10. And that keeps going out to 1,000 on this graph. Um, oh, no, it shows up on this graph too, 1,000. And then it goes higher than that still. I don't know what this number is. They didn't label this one or this one. So they didn't label those. So looking back along the light cone, this should be what 
we would be seeing in this model. And um, that 1,000 and whatever this is, let's call it 10,000 and 100,000, those are all crossing that light, that supposed light cone. Okay, the next sentence says the normalized scale factor a equals r over r sub naught is drawn as an alternate vertical axis. Okay, and that shows up over here. The scale factor now is 1, and that shows up in all the diagrams at 1. Over here, we have time t. This is 13.7 billion years. 13.7 billion years. And in the final diagram, uh, the conformal time tau is given at 40, 46 billion years. By the way, um, my uh, modified Milne model, I just feel like pointing out how that 46 billion years kind of uh, comes into play in my modified Milne model. Um, so basically what we have in the modified Milne model is a situation where you've got an outer Big Bang and maybe several inner bangs um, where, where um, yeah, let's go ahead and move that up there. We'll have something like that and then Let's kind of draw a hyperbolic arc um, and I kind of imagine these these smaller bangs are made of particles so they don't quite go the speed of light they're not they're not as big uh, but they they basically have this inner part and this surface this surface where the particles became freed enough to move away from each other is about 13.7 billion years giga years and this point here was about 40 maybe 45 billion years ago but all this um, time in here just unbelievably dense ridiculously dense um, all of that time from 13.8 billion to 45 billion years ago was just ridiculous density, inconceivable densities. Like talking, we're talking like even at this point, the density was greater than that of a neutron star. Um, and so taking that neutron star and pulling all of these items back, it's just incredibly dense. And the reason that you don't have gravitational collapse despite that ridiculous density is basically a symmetry argument. You don't have, um, you just don't have any direction for the particles to pull. And as long as there's no direction for them to pull in, they don't uh, collapse. All right, what's the next sentence over here? It says, all events that we currently observe are on our past light cone with apex t equals now. So they have drawn their past light cone in this diagram in the conformal time wrapping around that way. And uh, oh, here in the co-moving distance versus proper distance, it wipes out that way. And in, let's see, this is co-moving distance versus proper distance. This is co-moving distance versus uh, conformal time, and it just comes out uh, this way, and it goes in straight lines here, which uh, absolutely not what, um, well, co-moving distance, I have I don't think it wouldn't work in this diagram. Um, yeah, anyway, the uh, light cone goes this way in the Milne model. Um, it, it actually, in every one of these versions, 
um, the past light cone actually comes back to the point zero. Well, no, this one doesn't. No, this one doesn't either. Um, in any case, this has the proper distance. This has the co These two both have co-moving distance as their axis and conformal time here. I'm just going to use time. I'm not going to bother with conformal time. Um, there are no, there isn't a distinction between time and conformal time. The time here, 13.8 billion years. Giga years and the time um, here is 45 billion years, and uh, this is would call, be called the Euclidean distance, going from going from say here to here. That's uh, the Euclidean distance. Next line says, all co-moving objects beyond the Hubble sphere, the thin solid line, are receding faster than the speed of light. Okay, so the Hubble sphere is right here, and my pen isn't drawing. Okay, the Hubble sphere is right here, and in this diagram, the Hubble sphere is right there. In this one, the Hubble sphere is right here. Everything beyond that Hubble sphere is moving f moving away faster than the speed of light. In this one, the Hubble sphere is right here. Okay, that's interesting. Um, in this diagram, the Hubble sphere is, well, uh, actually, the Hubble sphere is right around here, um, but nothing out this is where the Hubble's law works. Um, everything is moving away at v equals, um, or with r equals ct, r equals vt, sorry. In, so in the modified Milne model, everything within here is r equals vt from there to there. That's the Hubble sphere because it's where the matter is, um, came from this explosion. And then there's a, another sphere, or maybe a, an approximate sphere. Um, and this is, this is R equals V times 13.8 billion years. And there's another sphere out here, R equals V times 45 billion years. Uh, is that right? 45 giga years. So it's it's still a hub it's still basically a Hubble sphere except there's a little bit more noise in it because you got all these other explosions going on. Um, they're all kind of coming out from different spots, but uh, that's the outside the Hubble sphere. It's actually another Hubble sphere essentially, except with a lot more noise. Okay, the next sentence says, top panel, proper distance, the speed of photons relative to us, the slope of the light cone is not constant, but rather is V receding minus C. So I think, uh, okay, well, let me, I'll read the next sentence in a second, but we're comparing um, the velocity of the light, which is, the slope, basically the inverse slope of this light cone, and the recession velocity of the Hubble sphere. I think that might be what they're doing. Let's check. Photons we receive that were emitted by objects beyond the Hubble sphere were initially receding from us, outward sloping light cone at t less than or equal to 5 billion years. So before 5 billion years, that's where those uh, the green light cone intersects with the red Hubble sphere there. The green, um, the, the actual photons were, fo the photons beyond the Hubble sphere were actually moving away 
the 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 photons coming toward us were coming were moving away from us because the space at that time was expanding faster than the photon was moving. Now, I would call this stretching space, but they get very offended if you call it stretching space. Um, this, but uh, essentially, what they're saying is that this green, this green line, is actually coming toward us in the space, but the space is being stretched. So the space is the space is being stretched faster than the uh, particle is coming toward us, which causes it to, in this d diagram, seem to be going in the opposite direction. Next sentence says, only when they passed from the region of superluminal recession, gray crosshatching, to the region of subluminal recession, no shading, can the photons approach us? Okay, so that is somewhere in here, the uh, gray, what was it, gray crosshatching. Okay, so in the area of the gray crosshatching is superluminal precession. Um, and in this region is our, what is it called, subluminal, subluminal precession, recession. In this area where the light, where, where the, uh, where things are stretching, I would think that all of everything over here would be superluminal recession, um, but maybe I'm mistaken. Why is, but that's where the event horizon is. So let's find out more about the event horizon. More detail about early times and horizons is visible in co-moving coordinates, middle panel, and conformal coordinates, lower panel. Our past light cone in co-moving coordinates appears to approach the horizontal axis asymptotically. Our, co our past light cone in co-moving coordinates appears to approach the horizontal t equals zero axis asymptotically. However, it is clear in the lower panel that the past light cone ends at a finite distance, about 46 billion years from the current distance to the particle horizon. Currently, observable light that has been traveling towards us since the beginning of the universe was emitted from co-moving positions that are now 46 billion light years from us. So that means that this point actually represents 46 giga light years. And this point here also represents a span of 46 billion light years in the co-moving. Wait, no. Sorry. Uh, this actually, it appears to be, <clears throat> it appears to be asymptotic, but it meets the zero point at 46 giga light years. <clears throat> the distance to the particle horizon as a function of time is represented by the dashed line. Okay, so essentially they've decided to call this line the particle horizon. And when you kind of mash this upward um, in a certain way, you cause that um, particle horizon to appear to bend, um, to kind of curve. And then when you uh, take that and I think um, maybe uh, apply a cosmological scale factor A of T to the whole thing, kind of scooch everything in that way, 
and you get this. Okay, unfortunately this video has already reached the 20 minute limit, or in fact passed it by a little bit. Um, so I'm going to stop right there. I'll have to do the rest of it in another video, I guess. Thanks for watching.